for, for YouTube, for science. Oh, holy, oh. I didn't even, I didn't even swallow. I didn't think you were gonna buy it. Hmm. Oh, why did I swallow? Oh my God. Well, that was a mistake. Oh, I just swallowed again. Now it's in the back of my throat. I like spicy things, but not this. Why? Why? Ah. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a hot sauce commercial. If you haven't subscribed or liked, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna share three tips with you guys, three pro tips of things that I do to make my product videos pop. So today we are shooting for Delightfully Hot and what they do is they make different hot sauces, but not only that, they create kits for you to make your own hot sauces. And so I'm making a product video for them today and this product video is gonna be highly complex because there's a lot of different moving parts. The way I'm breaking this product video up is into three sections of how we're gonna shoot this. We have our live action scenes, which are gonna be in the kitchen, showing people in a kitchen with the environment. Then we have our studio kitchen scenes where we want to shoot shots that look like they're in the kitchen, but we want them to be specially tailored with the lighting and space available. So we're going to shoot them here in the studio. And thirdly, we have our studio only shots. And those are shots that are going to be, once you go inside this box in the video, it's going to take you and kind of transport you to this different world where we're going to have more colorful backgrounds. And so there's three phases to this. And right now we're going to start with our studio kitchen scenes and our studio studio shots. We're gonna do the shots that are messy last in the cleaner shots first, cause it's just a lot easier, but always pre-plan and go through your storyboard so you can understand, all right, how am I gonna execute this to save yourself the most time? Cause if you're saving yourself time, you're saving yourself money. And that's really the name of the game when doing product videos. So the first shots that we're gonna be doing are our green screen shots, because there's a few things that we're gonna have to green screen or rotoscope out. And I like using these pop-up green screen diffusions. Everything that I talk about, always all the gear is always gonna be linked down below. The pluses about these green screens is that they are not super reflective, so you're not getting a bunch of green bounce. The bummer about them is once you unfold them, they don't really fold back up. So ours is kind of trashed, unfortunately. But with a little bit of gusto, Aha! See? The way I like to typically spin my products is using these Edelkrone Head 1s. You can use the Lazy Susan, you don't have to have anything motorized, or you can use a motorized Lazy Susan. The reason why I like using these is because it's controlled by an app, and you can use S-curves with it, and you can time it for what exactly you're looking for. The next thing that I like to use is you can go to any hardware store and buy a drill bit head just like this, and we're gonna use this because it can adjust like this, and we can tighten and put our pole or whatever we're gonna to use to mount our products. The first two things that we're gonna be getting with the green screen are a pepper and the recipe booklet, because both of those are gonna be shots that are gonna be integrated into other shots that were in the video. We are getting our blue screen or a green screen shot of the recipes book first, and we have the head one, like I showed you guys, and then we also have it on a, the slider. And instead of putting the camera on the slider, we put the product on the slider because then we don't have to move the camera around. The camera stays a lot steadier. And then we're working with something that's more lightweight. It gives us a little bit of better control. And this will help because in this shot, what's gonna happen is this is gonna drop down from the sky when peppers are flying, and then it's gonna flip towards the camera and get closer and closer and then go past the camera. So us creating that movement and not having to do it as much in post will give a more realistic look not only, but we also don't have to crop in so much in post that we're losing quality. Let's do it. 
So what we're doing now is I'm creating a launch board for our explosion shot where we shot the green screenshot. We're gonna add this in as our background to kind of integrate with that. Mangoes in here. Make a chunk of spline in there. Now that we've done our straight on explosion shots, we're gonna be doing our top down explosion shots. And this is a little bit more complicated. What we've done is mounted the Ursa onto a C-stand pointing straight down. And then we have a miniature C-stand right here and we're using a rod and we stuck it through the cap to hold up the bottle of hot sauce. Below we have peppers on black duvetine and we're gonna launch it up. The trick with this is not to make sure anything shakes. It's gonna be very hard because we're in a very tight space, but it should give this really cool explosion effect. Product videos are a messy job. Right now what we're doing is we've made our own little stand right here off of our miniature C stand and Alex and I are standing behind each sides of this diffusion paper and we're tossing seasoning mixed with peppers, kind of like you would see in a hot wing commercial and then boom, right onto the bottle. And we're shooting this on the Ursa again at 300 frames. Next, we're gonna do our box opening and closing scenes. And this is at the beginning of the video and at the end of the video. So the way I do this typically is I take string, a needle, I take our whatever our box is, I'm gonna thread this needle, stick it into the box, and that's gonna allow us to have a string that I can remove and post using simple wire removal. And that'll allow us to open and close the box and remove that string so that it looks like the box is doing it by itself. From there, to make sure that it's secure, we're gonna take double-sided sticky tape and stick it onto the platform. Otherwise, if we try to pull the box with a string, it's just gonna move around. But we're gonna use this string to close this. The problem is, is the flap doesn't close all the way. So after we pull down like this, we're gonna put in this stick to shut this part. Once we do that, we have double-sided tape that's gonna hold it shut. I'm gonna put those, combine those two shots together so it looks like one smooth closing shot. We'll mask the stick out, not a big deal. Other things we're gonna be doing is, this is gonna be matching up with our top down exploding pepper bottle shot. And to make it look more realistic, in post, I'm gonna mask this out. Typically I green screen, but we have a stationary shot so we don't need to do that. I can easily mask it out. But to make it look like it's actually happening underneath here, instead of shooting it as all one shot, what I'm gonna do is take some peppers and just toss them up in the air so that it looks like they're popping out of the box and then boom, falling out onto the side. This is our intro shot. So what we're doing here is we want to show us going into the box. And what I have is we have the camera up on the C stand pointing straight down. I have a monitor right here. So we make sure that we nail it in the center. I'm gonna have Alex slide it in with his hand. I'm gonna stop it with my hand. From there, we're gonna open the box. We're each gonna grab one of the materials. And then with my other hand, I'm gonna toss up the peppers. And remember that green screen shot that we shot earlier with the rotating peppers? We're gonna use that mixed in with those tossing up shots. I'm gonna mask that green screen, whatever you wanna call it, in as it tosses up. And we're gonna use the green screen one to cover the frame and these ones to be the live action shots in the shot itself, and that's gonna to transition to our next shot. I've created a rig that is attached to the camera that's attached to this uh, chicken wing, and we're gonna dip it into the hot sauce itself. Uh, I wanted to have a very accurate shot of it, so we just used a rod to a magic arm to a small rig clamp to some gaff tape into a screw that's connected to the chicken wing. Sometimes you just have to rig things together, and then we have duct tape here. We're gonna see how well it holds. And we have a simple key light bounce and backlight coming through the window. We're gonna haze it up a little bit and create an awesome shot. So let's do it. So this is our last shot of the shoot. I'm super excited because it's been a long day. And what we're doing is we're using my Rabe 360 spinner with a 50 on the Canon, and it's gonna be super simple. I'm positioning, positioning each of us because we're making the hot sauce in a position where one person's gonna pour into the blender, the next person, the next person. 
And then from there, we go into that blender shot that you saw earlier in the BTS. So super simple. The way that we're positioning the lights is we're still using them just to bounce. Very simple, but we're keeping them lower so that our bodies are actually blocking the lights from the camera itself. Quick tip number one, when using a green screen, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna evenly light it. So we're gonna stick lights on both sides and also you wanna make sure that you have enough exposure but not too much exposure because the more light that you throw onto here, the more spill you're gonna get onto your product, especially when you're working with extremely reflective products. Quick tip two is make sure you have space, as much space as you can in between a green screen and your product that you're gonna be shooting. That is important because that, again, will reduce the spill. Tip three, when shooting with green screens, what you have to remember is whatever you're shooting, look over the product and make sure that there is no green in it. And also, when using a green screen, you actually don't have to shoot with green. You just need an opposite color. And since we have green here, we're gonna be flipping our screen around to blue because there is no blue in the image, which won't cause any problems in post. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this commercial. It's been a lot of days filming. I'm tired. We've done it. This is what goes into it. If you guys haven't subscribed, check out my channel. And if you don't want to, that's fine too. This is just for fun, but I'm getting paid, so it's not at the same time. Yeah.